Guys, this is EBP Man with TabletsForMe.com, and today we're going to take a look at the Tassimo T55 single cup brewer. So the Tassimo uses um, a tea disc system. This is what they call the other coffee machines that you see on the market. Use um, they may have other names from like pods. Um, each each company has a proprietary type disc. Now, one of the things that um, some other uh, carriers or providers of coffee. Um, we'll talk about is freshness seals. So when you look at the T-Disc, there's a couple things to notice. First of all, that it uses a barcode. This barcode is what determines how much water, how hot the coffee is going to be, and the type of pressure that's needed in order to create your drink. But also, this T-Disc is actually sealed. So it's, it's vacuum sealed, so you have your coffee and your filter um, all in one cartridge. So there's really nothing to clean. All you do is you insert the cartridge, it determines based on reading the barcode what type of coffee you have. It determines if it's an 8 ounce cup or a 12 ounce cup of coffee. And it just brews your coffee simply by reading that barcode. You'll notice here that we have a pretty wide selection. So I have my decaf coffee as well. I also have um, some Colombian coffee. So you can choose different type of coffees that are available at Tassimo. If you would like to have, let's say, tea, tea is available as well. Again, all from the same machine. You also have here uh, some hot chocolate. So again, nothing to change. All you do is you make your coffee and then immediately afterwards you can go ahead and make your uh, hot chocolate. And you really don't have the problem where some other machines have where uh, you mix the taste. So you don't taste in your coffee um, any kind of the syrup that is part of your um, hot chocolate. Uh, Tassimo also uh, has lattes and the lattes from from the Tassimo uh, here's your this is your espresso disc and then this is your cream disc one of the things that sets them apart is the fact that their cream is uh, it's liquid based so it's not a powder that you're adding water to um, and you'll notice again the barcode is there so it, it pressurizes and it creates a really nice froth for your coffee uh, here's another example of another type of coffee, so you just can get a sense of the variety. Uh, this is a caramel latte. Again, here is your espresso, and then here is your, your cream that you'd add to it. Uh, I talked about how the, the discs were sealed, and what you see here is this is what happens after a disc is used. It basically punches two holes into your uh, disc. One, this one right here, is where the water goes in, and this one right here is um, also an area where the actual... Uh, what is it the coffee would come out of. So water goes in through here and then it goes through the filtration system as you can see this one's already used and then the espresso would come out. Let's see how the machine makes coffee. Alright so let's go over the machine um, a bit. So what you have is you have your disc right. Your disc would go in this area. Uh, there's a barcode reader here that will read your disc as we talked about earlier. It just reads it and it determines what it needs to do and you would just close this and it would pierce the actual areas that I had shown earlier. You have a LED display that's going to give you some information. Not a lot to watch here except it'll tell you when you could actually open up or remove your coffee. You have a couple buttons here that you press. Not really complicated. The first button that you'll press is uh, in many cases just a single button if you're just going to make a cup of coffee. If you want a stronger cup of coffee what you would do is you would press the minus button and that will add less water and it will basically create a stronger uh, cup of coffee. If you do a plus what it does is it's going to add Add a little bit more uh, coffee uh, water so it, it may be um, a little milder. The other thing that you'll notice here is that you have this, uh, this little coaster here that allows you to adjust so if you have a short glass let's say you're doing espresso you just turn it over like this and it raises the cup here and you can raise push it the other way so if you have let's say for, for another type of glass I'm going to use this clear glass and you notice that it doesn't fit but what you can also do is for tall mugs especially if you're going to take it on the go you could do this so you have again the option to use this swivel or to actually take out uh, the bottom portion if you have one of those travel mugs or a large uh, glass as I do. It's going to take about, uh, I'd say almost a minute to make a cup of coffee. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to make a latte. I'm going to shake it a little bit. No, I said just to shake it a little bit. I'm then going to lower this piece here. You'll notice that a couple drops of, coffee or of, of cream is going to come out. That's okay. And you'll notice that this is now bright um, amber. And I'm going to hit my plus because I want a little bit more water in here. I want it to froth up even more. And I'm going to press this, the button that will start the coffee. So let's go ahead and press it. 
Now, a couple things are going to happen as it's, first of all, it's going to read the actual barcode. It's going to then start pressurizing the, the machine's going to pressurize so that we could get nice frothy coffee coming out of this or frothy cream. And you can hear it starting already. And the other thing that it's doing is it's, again, um, going to determine how much water should be going into this cup. Uh, you'll also notice that the, the actual cream will start kind of to swirl a little bit and it's because it's aerating it. And if we get a little closer, you'll notice that it already started frothing. So it's already starting to froth. And the froth is that top portion right there. You can see the steam coming out because it's actually uh, warming up. And what we'll get is a good maybe an inch, maybe an inch and a half uh, froth. And you notice how the, it's not just dripping down because, again, it's creating that froth that you see with other machines. Um, in, like if you were to use a Keurig, um, machine, one of the older machines, um, or any of the other uh, coffee makers uh, that are out there, you have to have a separate machine to froth your milk to get this kind of effect. But here we're talking about one machine that will froth it and that will um, do also your espresso. And you can see that it, it, it makes a cup of coffee, or, or in this case the, the milk and the frothing that you need, pretty quickly. And again, you'll notice that uh, how it aerates as it's doing that. Uh, if you get a, we get a little bit closer, you'll notice that this is the cream that came out of that desk. It was a concentrated cream mixed with water. And then you notice that I have about an inch of froth already in this cup. So what it's doing now, it's depressurizing. So you hear like a little tap going tip, tip, tip. And it's just leaving or letting go of the pressure. So when you open up uh, this area here, you don't have to worry about any, um, any pressure being released. I'll open this up. That's my first disc. Now, all I do is I take my espresso and I just place it in there. I got the right one. Do the same thing. And for the espresso, I'm, you know what, I'll do the same thing. I, I, I'll hit the plus sign because I want a little bit more in there. Uh, and I'll hit the start button. Don't have to do that, but I'm, again, I'm just doing it for my taste. Now, what you'll notice is especially because of the clear clap, is you'll get some really nice banding happening. The espresso shot isn't anywhere as much um, milk. The lattes are more milk than they are um, um, coffee. But what you'll notice is as it starts coming down, you'll get a really nice banding that will take place. So if you do get a machine like this, I'd recommend to get clear cups. I think your guests and people, um, as they're drinking it, they will enjoy it more just because of um, how nice it looks. So here you'll notice the nice um, banding that's taking place. So you have um, your, uh, your froth still there. And you notice how nice you get this nice um, espresso banding that will take place. A nice separation where you have your froth on the top. Um, you also have some cream on the bottom. And in the middle, you'll have your coffee. The one thing I also mentioned as I've compared this machine to other machines is that the cost per cup is much cheaper than I found with some of the other machines. So if you are really into drinking good coffee, I'd highly recommend you really taking a look at how much does it cost for you to buy the discs for this machine versus um, some of the other machines out there. Uh, for example, I've, as I've done my research, I found that the uh, Starbucks machine is much more expensive than this machine is, and in many cases even the Keurig. So here you'll notice we have our cup of coffee. Notice that nice blending and separation that's taking place. And I have now done with my latte, and if I wanted to, I could sprinkle some, some um, something on top, on, on top, some cinnamon, and serve it. So just finished my latte. Now, same machine. All I'm doing is switching this. haven't cleaned anything. I'm going to make a standard coffee. Um, I'm not going to press the plus or the minus. I'm just going to do a single shot. And again, this will be a black coffee where, that I can actually add cream. If I'd like, you could get like some mini mousse or something like that that you'd like to add. I have some here on the side. So I've got some mini mousse. I choose to go with this. Uh, some, um, some guests are maybe lactose intolerant and the mini mousse seem to work well for those individuals. You could also go with the powdered cream or normal cream. But again, this is a standard coffee. And again, you'll see right here, I did put the tray here uh, since I have a shorter glass. Again, going with the see-through. And you'll notice that the amount of drip that you get of coffee is much more than I got here with my latte.
One thing I also mention is that uh, the machine is is relatively quiet. Um, it's really quiet right now in the house, so it's probably the only thing that you hear. But I wake up early in the morning, make coffee, uh, don't make a mess, just go ahead and pop in my cup. And don't wake up anyone in the house. It's just something that's real straightforward and it's relatively quiet. You can get out of this machine out of a single tank anywhere from four to six uh, cups of coffee. It all depends on the type of coffee that you're making, if it's a large glass or a small glass, but it's around 54 ounces. So uh, you'd get a, anywhere from four to six cups of coffee without having to add more water. So it's doing the same thing it did before. It's just um, relieving some of the pressure, but there you notice there's really no drip coming out at this point. And it's just, again, um, done. And here I have my cup of coffee. So if you have someone who likes a black cup of coffee, you have it, and you notice how nice and steamy the, the glass is because of how hot it is. So we have our latte. We have some black coffee. I'm taking out my desk that I already used. So that's all I have to do to clean up. And now what I'm going to do is make some hot chocolate. Again, haven't changed anything. I'm just going to put my disc in. I'm going to close it. And now I'm going to press that single press button to make hot chocolate. And you can see how versatile this is. If you have guests over or like in my house, I have tea drinkers, I have coffee drinkers, and I have hot chocolate drinkers. So this uh, is a hot chocolate for my son. Again, same process. It was a little bit faster than the previous one because, again, it read the disc. It determined what it needed to do. It knew that it was hot chocolate, and it started pouring. Now, uh, the other thing about this machine that makes it unique, uh, not all machines have a filter, like a water filter. So in the back, it does have a water filter. Um, I use filtered water from my refrigerator. But if you were to use, um, let's say, tap water, you could go ahead and put tap water in the back, and it has a filter that will filter uh, the water for you. And now we have our, our glass of hot chocolate. And again, I did a standard size. You notice also you get some nice uh, foaming on the top. So if we wanted to throw some marshmallows on there, it will come out really nice. And it's, we're done. So all it's doing right now is depressurizing. But now here you have um, your glass of hot chocolate. So as you can see, we made just um, around a minute each. We made ourselves a latte, black coffee, and a hot chocolate. And again, the only cleanup that we have is just the disc and tossing it away. Now here's one tip I'm going to give you. This is, um, this, is this portion here of this machine. Um, I have an, uh, an older Tassimo as well. And... Um, I've had some friends say, well, my coffee, especially as I'm making my lattes, it doesn't froth anymore. Is my machine broken? Well, the answer is it really isn't broken. Uh, this part actually pops out, and when you remove it, you will need to clean this because the coffee grounds, um, and even though you don't have coffee grounds coming into your coffee, but you know, some of the residue from the coffee will basically stick inside. So what you have to do is you separate it like this. You're not going to break anything, and there may be some residue here. And there's also, this comes apart even further, where, and this is, the, this is where the magic happens. Let's see if we can get a little closer there, see if you can see that. But there is, um, you see that? You can see right, right there. What ends up happening is that little hole right here on the top gets clogged. And if it gets clogged, that kind of whirling uh, motion that you saw in the coffee will not take place. This is where it actually aerates or froths the coffee. The, the cream in this case. So if this gets clogged, you'll get flat coffee. So all you have to do is take it apart like I did there. You just clean it, wash it. I do it maybe every two months, and you'll always have a, your coffee made in this way by just cleaning this. And it's real simple. Once you've taken it apart, you put it back together, everything snaps in. You put this back on, and then what you do is you insert it back in. So that's the Tassimo T55 and why I choose it as my coffee machine.